Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Council Council. I am Luke Anthony Walsh and joining me is the Tom Scott to my Matt Gray, Mr. Michael Brown. Michael, how are we? Oh wow, I get to be the well, the way better known one. That's, that's well, good. Well, you're, you're, you are the one that went to York, so you know. That is true, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, it's good to, good to be here, Luke. I'm excited to cancel some things. Yes, in, in, indeed. Before we start, first week of uh, Jay Biden's presidency, uh, Michael, mm. did you watch the inauguration? You know, actually, I didn't watch the inauguration. Oh. See, I watched the Trump inauguration because, like, Trump, like, it was it was exciting. Uh, and it was obviously it was when I was at, uh, it was when I was at York, funnily enough. And myself and my housemates had a like, I kind of like a pool, I guess, like an Oscar pool. But the question was what which thing was trump going to mention first <laughs> so it was kind of like um and i i won actually so i went for the funny thing is i can't even remember what it was that i said but it was uh yeah it was something i think it was to do with muslims <laughs> and i and i thought i was like i think he'll mention that and he did and uh yeah so this time there weren't as many games because joe biden's a pretty boring guy <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, what I loved about the ceremony is that it was very much pomp and circumstance. You know, you had mm. Lady Except Gaga belting out uh, the national anthem. I think she mm. did a pretty good job. Uh, what, what's the is it? What Glenn Dallas or whatever the cowboy's name was, just <laughs> casually walking out wearing wearing a cowboy hat and jeans, singing "Amazing Grace," um, and of course Kamala Harris and Joe Biden now being sworn into office. Um, it's one of those moments, and I always go back to it, and I, I cringe, and I think, well, why did I say that? I remember in 2008, when I was in junior school, when I was in primary school, I was uh, it was the uh, you said uh, something racist about Obama. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when everyone was was like, "Yay, Obama!" I was like, "Come on, uh, John McCain," uh, because my, and and this is how stupid I was. I I solely said it because oh, he could turn the White House into a chip factory. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, oh. I was so not funny. Little did I know what politics really was back then. But here we are now. As always, we will be discussing your council issues, uh, looking at this week's headlines, and much much more. So, without further ado, Michael, take it away. Yeah, so I'm going to be cancelling. Pretty obvious one. I, I was thinking about it for a, a second, then it came to me. QAnon. Uh, I was I was going to maybe look at a, a QAnon related story, but then I realised just like the whole phenomenon right now. And I think that the best thing is so obviously QAnon. It was this idea that Donald Trump was secretly going to drain the swamp, but he was going to do it in a. He was doing it behind the scenes. That was the idea, uh, and. First of all, the logic of it was was really stupid because it's like, um, why if that was his plan to do it all behind the scenes, then it kind of would have been to his detriment that QAnon actually became a phenomenon. But fortunately, it turned out in the end that Donald Trump was not planning a massive uh, secret roundup of all the uh, corrupt elites uh, it, behind the scenes. And actually, he just left and didn't really achieve anything. And... Basically, obviously now he, he has left and there are kind of two groups of people, the people who are just leaving the QAnon movement. But the best thing is there are still some people who believe that this is part of some master plan. Uh, so what do you what do you think about the whole QAnon thing? First and foremost, can, can we take a minute to appreciate the name QAnon? I mm. mean, like, uh, do, you, do you remember the yoga ad, advert for Dan on? The guys, mm, Dan on. Uh, yeah, I just, remember, I just think a, a lot of smart tech people go, cure. I don't know. <laughs> just in, in, in that hipster mm. vibe. I mean, they must have really thought, what should we call ourselves, lads? QAnon. QAnon. That sounds like a really daft, stupid name. Fuck it. Let's go with it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that is dumb. I mean. T t tell me more about QAnon, because uh, admittedly, and I'm, I'm going to put my hands up, I don't know too much about them. Uh, well, OK, actually, you know, what? I, I want to. So I found a uh, if you want to check out some some interesting posts, you can go to the great awakening dot win and see all these sorts of posts. <laughs> dot win <laughs> dot win. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that could possibly like. Obviously, usually it's like, you know, dot co dot UK is obviously for the UK dot AU is for Australia. I don't know what country you got dot win, uh, but. Uh, I'll read you the title. It says, at first I was disappointed in today's events, and then I realized why the military wanted Biden sworn in, and Q told us why this had to happen. Uh, and then it's a really long post, which is, 
you know, probably just saying again, part of the idea that it's this big master plan. Uh, and then one of the top comments says, says, although I agree with most of what you are saying, why didn't the military just detain Biden as soon as he was sworn in? What exactly are they waiting for? It's not like any of them could have run off anywhere. There were troops everywhere. So basically they're confused why why the military hasn't saved the day for them. But ultimately, the idea is it comes from, I guess, uh, a, a post by a guy who called themselves Q, who may be multiple people, who claims to be like involved in this, who claims to be like a secret agent. He's like, hey guys, my name's Q. But obviously <laughs> he's, he's also anonymous, so Q went on. Uh, oh, I see. And uh, and basically his whole yeah so he's he's saying like that he's a secret agent and he knows that Donald Trump's actually got a secret plan or had a secret plan to get rid of uh, I think like there's the whole pedophile thing comes into it as well like the idea that like a lot of the people in you know like remember PizzaGate that there was like a child sex ring in a pizza shop uh, so Which all of that Hillary Clinton was all behind yeah exactly so all of that uh, comes together but I think ultimately it was just a massive scale cope to deal with the fact that Trump was really corrupt. And honestly, it's just, it's insane that people believe Trump was this anti-corruption person when he just has so many dodgy things going on and just exudes grifter energy. But mm. yeah, they, they really wanted to believe that he was actually going to save the day. So they decided that there was a secret operation to uh, deal with everyone. Uh, who was, you know, because if he would have just started arresting people, the logic goes, then he would have got assassinated or something. So his plan was to wait until he had all the, you know, everything had fallen into place. So we'll see. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the QAnon people are still right. Maybe it's still part of the master plan and we're like idiots, but I doubt it. It'd make a great plot twist in uh, in James Bond, wasn't it? Like mm. just, uh, just out of nowhere, Q just comes out to be a far right racist um <laughs> inside a spy in the white yeah, house yeah, I, that. yeah I should never yeah. have trusted you well fuck you glory to america just shoots him yeah know, yeah also q q's like a he has been recast as a i mean i know this was like in skyfall i think q became like a uh nerdy white tech kid which yeah. let's be honest is the exact kind of person <laughs> so it all makes sense anyway what are you cancelling luke uh yeah i haven't decided whether to cancel it or not yet we've got a t- we've got a oh sorry oh sorry yeah yeah, yeah. sorry official procedures of cancel, just cancel. assuming you would cancel the racists <laughs> um yeah i've got to cancel q and on unfortunately like, it sounds like a great idea uh and it sounds like a, a great piece of fiction but well, yeah. when you're dealing with Fox News and reality, I mean, let's face it, it's just it's just every journalist nightmare when you're trying to name a source that's just QAnon. Mm-hmm. Um, my my first pick for this week, uh, this episode, Michael, is microtransactions. Oh yeah. So yeah. you you're gonna you're about to cancel me uh, when I tell this story. So so be prepared. I loaded up Fortnite for the first time in a while. Ah. and the only reason i did it is because they brought out a new range of of skins available in game where you can wear a football kit as as your character now you know me i I like my sport i like my football um and i had to there there was a celtic kit which i had to buy it was worth 1500 v bucks would you like to know how many great British pounds I invested to buy that skin for my character that uh, that uh, I, I decided to play for for just a I'll skin? T- tell you what, Luke, one is one pound <laughs> would be too many. <laughs> I invested fifteen pounds and ninety nine pennies into a little skin on a game that I barely even play and a game for gay fifteen year old girls who have nothing better to do during <laughs> lockdown. So. Um, as, as much as you know, it is. The, I'm just uh, imagining the idea of like it's it's just uh, <laughs> newly out of the closet lesbians. <laughs> uh. um, yeah, and uh, it's been feeding my uh, my boredom during lockdown, along with uh, Cluster Truck. I don't know whether you played that game, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I as much as it's been fun, microtransactions deserve to get in the bin. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's an interesting story because you're coming at, at it from the perspective of somebody who did get involved in microtransactions. I think obviously the thing is the the big controversy has come from when microtransactions are part of are, are put there to 
make the gameplay smoother and basically by not doing the microtransactions your game is actually more difficult like uh, obviously there's i think i remember somebody talking about how there's a game of thrones uh, browser game and basically the idea was that every single thing had these timers so if you wanted to you know it was kind of like a strategy game i think so if you wanted to build like a castle or something you'd have a timer and it would last for ages but if you spent some money oh then you could rush it and mm. obviously the the famous example i think was uh star there was like a star wars game and the idea uh, was battlefront yeah. yeah yeah and in order to play as darth vader it was like you basically have to play like a thousand hours of just like grinding to get all the the in-game you know whatever experience points or you could just spend money and get uh and get it immediately and i think obviously yeah that comes across i will say microtransactions for extra things it's it's kind of okay but i'm also sort of just like it i guess yeah the thing is it, it comes across as 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 if it's no longer it's no longer about the art man and you know obviously video games cost uh, a lot of money anyway you know like mm. you buy them i think and, and in a way i will say i'm often against things which are are free in like a deceptive way so i don't like how there'll be lots of free mobile games and things like that but then like it's filled with all sorts of things like basically you pretty much do have to buy a membership in order to make it effective because i don't like being lied to so i suppose yeah that's the thing i don't like about about um microtransactions do, do, do you remember a time where with microtransactions in games is that the only time you use it is for dlc and uh, extra content mm. to add on to yeah, the yeah, game i know yeah. you and i are both fans of civilization uh yes. by sid meyer and i know for civilization 6 which i really need to get into and, and really get my head around as, as yeah. to how to play it really uh there is expansion packs for different um mm. worlds and, and different scenarios yeah and, I like um, that. and you know that that brings value to it and obviously it it gives the the uh, production company the chance and the developers to offer ultimate editions where you buy it all in one go and and, and so on and so forth but you know I, I feel like for something as petty and as uh homo uh generic as buying a skin on fortnite a game which is basically for losers um yeah yeah I, I think that's it. It just it's and also I mean this is stuff that's let's be as you already pointed out directed at a, a younger audience. So it's kind of like at the end of the day, do they really you know they could buy a real outfit for? Do, for... do you know do you know what else that really pisses me off about Fortnite as amongst that and many other things is that when you're in the Fortnite store or, or, or on the and you can customize all these different pieces, it only gives you a select things of what you can do. And like, so you can customize the thing that you glide off the battle bus from, and you can. Mm. You know, but you're trying to find it. You can't find it. Like, yeah, what? this is this is a very dated complaint. I'm just I'm having flashbacks to was it YouTube Rewind 2018? Uh, or it was like I'd have uh, it was Will Smith. He's like I'd have Fortnite, Marcus S. Brownlee. <laughs> Was that 20... I can't remember if it was 28. See, it feels like it was a while 2018, ago. 2018, it was. I think, what yeah. was it, 2019? 2019 was the... Was it the list one? Oh, oh God, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they were just so bad at them. Like, <laughs> And uh, you had, like, um, Ninja and uh, Man's Not Hot. It was a really shit year. <laughs> mm. Like, it wasn't hard it. For, uh, for KSI or Will and E to, uh, to, to tear it apart. Anyway... Let's get into the... Is so it cancelled, did... though? Is it cancelled? Oh, sorry, is it cancelled? Yeah, I keep forgetting to actually cancel things. Yes, we will cancel it. Uh, we will cancel microtransactions. Even though, as you said, there are things where there's, like, DLC and stuff like that. But I think maybe you could argue that's not microtransactions. I think the thing with microtransactions, what defines them is that they're very petty. Mm -hmm. And the pettiness is what makes them terrible. So, yes. Yeah. Microtransactions cancelled. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, you, you said we didn't have any uh, any comments which is mm. is great you know what? this is actually gonna be quite a short one because i've only got three news stories for you as well so well, uh, I, I, can, can we uh change the game a little bit uh this week oh yeah um and uh just a story that's came in uh in the last hour or so jenny bond a royal correspondent ah uh, a well-known royal correspondent who's sort of been familiar with you know the royal affairs in the last few years she was very prominent around diana and uh, al fayed and uh, and so on um, announced this afternoon she's d doing uh, some business with the WWE ahead of this Sunday's Royal Rumble. I mean, like, I, 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 I cringed. I, I cringed. And uh, in, in the video she says, um, 
Uh, oh, J- Jenny Bond, a Royal Rumble correspondent here, and she talks about the the Royal Rumble match. You know, one of the biggest nights in in, in, in the Royal. wrestling calendar, and she talks about. Uh, and and we, now we have the the great quarrel between William and Andrew, uh, talking of course about Bill Goldberg uh, fighting for yeah, the WWE course. title we against Drew this. McIntyre. People should know this, um, and I just I just cringed. I mean, I, I couldn't believe like of all the the ra- random things that you see. On a Thursday afternoon, as we record this, that that was one of the things I did not expect. I sound. I think it sounds like uh, great because uh, I already expressed my opinions about this Jenny Bond person. I said she looked uh, absolutely beautiful for a seventy-year-old, and the, to find out she's into these, you know, cool, cool sports like wrestling. Oh, that just adds to the appeal. She mm. seems like she's just, you know, a cool grandma, and I I love that. Uh, overall, you know what, Luke? You should you should start a wrestling podcast. I realize that because <laughs> basically, then you can get it because uh, then you can get it all out of the way. And the, the uh, thing, the thing is, the thing is, uh, 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 the, th- the thing is about wrestling, and you can clip this for your main channel, is that there is no greater form in the world that gives you so much beautiful bollocks, uh, as well as athletic prowess and and uh, just amazement, like like wrestling. I mean. Uh, uh, next Sunday, uh, we've got the Super Bowl coming up, and that's the one of the biggest nights in in, in American sporting history. What, what are you putting that face for? I'm going to zoom in on uh, when I edit. I'm just going to zoom in on my face as you're talking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think it's there's no greater time to be alive when you see the spectacle that, that the Americans put on for not only WrestleMania, which which is coming up in April, uh, but also for the Super Bowl. But with the Royal Rumble, there is that, that element where anything can happen. Um, Michael, have you ever watched WWE? Have you ever sort of... I have, I have watched some WWE in my time. I, I confess, guilty as charged. I've watched some. I will say this, uh, you know, I... At the end of the day, I, I'm, I'm quite picky with my sports because I think I, I've got a lot of other things I'm into as well. So it's kind of like if I if I get into too many sports, like ultimately every single sport you get invested in is just a significant chunk of hours like of, of off your life. I mean, I say a significant chunk, like hundreds of hours off your life. Like like if you're into into football, for example, that's mm. like a lot of time you're going to be spending watching football. Uh, you know, if you're into boxing or snooker mm. or golf. Any sport you get into, you've got to bear in mind it's going to take a lot out of your life. So for me, with the whole wrestling thing, I've seen it. I will never, ever get into it because I know that if if I did get into it, you know, that would be the worst case scenario because then suddenly I'm I'm not being productive. I'm just watching WrestleMania. And no, but I always say this. I don't hate uh, wrestling. Like I, I have... I have some respect for it, and I think you know the idea of people just saying, "Oh, it's it's stupid because it's not real." I think that's silly because I can admit there is a real talent in mm. the performance of it all, and in the uh, in the athleticism of it all. Although I will say at the same time, uh, I think annoyingly when you watch it on camera, it's it's less convincing than if like I imagine if you watch it in like uh, in like the the actual crowd. It probably looks really impressive. When you can watch it on camera, you can sometimes tell, you know, like, no offense, everyone's are very talented, but you can sometimes tell that they're not actually hitting each other. Of you course. Just like a guy go like... Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. But no, yeah, yeah. I, I don't hate wrestling. Uh, so, but I'm also not going to cancel Jenny Bond because I think she's a queen. Well, uh, well she wasn't up for counseling. This is, this is the oh, news oh, portion. <laughs> oh, this is just... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, never mind. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think there's no there's no greater place like and 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 you compare it to what we have in the UK. I mean, FA Cup final day, I guess, is the closest you can get to to uh, to our our British uh, mm. Super Bowl, I guess. And we don't even have even a tenth of uh, of, the of what they. Yeah, we don't have halftime half shows. Trip. You know, I wouldn't could, mind bringing. Could in you halftime. imagine if they had a halftime show at, at the FA Cup? Could you yeah. imagine? Ooh, that would oh, be, uh... and it's and it's Burnley two, Chelsea one at halftime, yeah. and here we have Lady Gaga. That's, that's the funny thing about uh, the FA Cup; it always ends up like a lot of the time it ends up being a really good team versus kind of just an average team. And I, I like that about the FA Cup. It's like 
I, it's almost like there's there's no sense of it being like a clash of the titans. It's more just like, oh, it's it's one team that happened to manage to get into the final versus the team that probably actually deserves to be there. Well, I mean, they both deserve to be there, but you know, the team that's actually uh, consistently good, which I do like. I do like the fact that in the FA Cup, you can just go for it. Yeah. You know, like you can just get a lucky streak. Anyway, let's get into the, the, the news. The Well, sorry, I know that was news, but let's get into some, some other news. And it's good, actually, because like I say, I only had three things. So if you're going to bring up your uh, wrestling defense anytime, it's good it was now. But uh, here's, here's my news for you. So I wasn't sure what order to take these in. So I figured we'd start off with the, the smallest news and then work up to the biggest news. Uh, first news, and I like this one. Uh, this is from VT. Dot co no idea but uh, it's woman creates a gender neutral deck of playing cards featuring no kings or queens oh, God. Uh, wait wait just no kings or queens yeah so apparently there's still jacks oh actually no sorry there are there are jacks actually there are no jacks because okay it says um last june she was struck she was stuck indoors uh she had an epiphany about the traditional decks she noticed the queen and king cards are ranked in terms of gender, with the female cards existing to a lower status than the male kings. And basically what she did is she replaced it. So instead of jack, queen, king, it is now bronze, silver, gold. Oh, for now, sake. The, there are lots of problems with this. I think <laughs> the first one would obviously be the fact that it's based in a historical precedent. Like, ultimately, you can't you can't rewrite reality like the reason why kings are worth more than queens if you're going to be absolutely frank about it is because historically there were more kings like in you know kings in positions of power in a society like there were many countries where being a queen wasn't even like possible because they you know it was it would only have male leaders so basically there's a that's why it's the case so it's kind of a bit like saying i made a gender neutral set of playing cards where kings are, aren't more powerful than queens uh you'd have to be like Oh, I made a gender gender neutral version of the Tudors, where actually it was uh, Lady Jane Grey who had six husbands because, you know, it's it's sexist for men to have lots of wives or something like that. You know, at the end of the day, you can't cancel history. So that's stupid. And then also there's the fact that, of course, a jack is is less powerful than the queen. And a jack, if you couldn't tell by the name, is a man. So what do you think about this idea of gender neutral uh, playing cards? It's just gone too far, isn't it? <laughs> it's gone too far it's it's up there with identifying as a penguin mm. uh levels of, of of stupid yeah i'm still upset that club penguin was cancelled <laughs> yeah but hashtag yeah. bring back club penguin <laughs> r.i.p flash player uh yeah, that's so sad no actually you know what that's that's what we should uh we should talk about at some point we should talk about the whole uh fool of flash and what it means for society but not now because we've got some some more news and this is Oh, I don't know about this one. So uh, I will say, actually, the fact that, that there's been relatively less news, and I do think the news stories we have are not as exciting as they could be, uh, I think reflects the fact that we are now past the age of Trump. Like, these, I was looking for kind of controversial, exciting news. And, you know, even with your help, we've just got some old woman doing some wrestling things, uh, some other young woman making some gender-neutral cards, and Kellyanne Conway accused of posting topless photos of her 16-year-old daughter on Twitter. Oh, God. Uh, so basically, Kellyanne Conway, you know, I've read this through, but she she tweeted very uh, abruptly a topless picture of her daughter, Claudia, who, by the way, is 16 uh, on Twitter. And then she very quickly deleted it. But obviously, lots of people then jumped to it. And apparently, uh, Claudia Conway speculated that her mother may have accidentally posted the image. And then this is a quote. I'm assuming my mum took a picture of it to use against me one day. And then somebody hacked her or something. She said, I'm literally at a loss for words. If you see it, report it. Uh, so, oh, and then Claudia Conway later, later tweet, uh, tweeted, oh, sorry, TikTok, actually. So, Kellyanne, you're going to fucking jail. So, first of <laughs> all, the main takeaway here is, one, apparently uh, the relationship between Kellyanne Conway and her daughter is a bit rocky mm -hmm. and probably not helped by uh, Kellyanne Conway let, let's say accidentally, I mean, if she deleted it very quickly, it implies accidentally, posting a naked picture of her daughter to Twitter. There's there's a lot to, un you know, have you ever heard that expression, uh, there's a lot to unpack here, but we should yeah. start by burning the suitcase? That's, yeah. that's how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what do you think? So, so we, we are we are men. Um, yeah. 
women post pictures of their boobies. Um, yeah, that's the real thing. Claudia Conway's well, whether, whether, you're, whether you're 16 or 61, they, they surface online. Um, was it a few, uh, quite a few years ago? It was mm. Kate, Middle- the, Kate Middleton was caught out. Yeah, well, there was the massive uh, hack where like uh, Jennifer Lawrence was the big one that got. Yeah, cool. I mean, who, who hasn't seen those ones? Uh, I actually, the funny thing is, I don't think I have. But yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, Kellyanne Conway, uh, I believe she is the journalist for... Uh, well, she, she was like the Trump press secretary. No, she wasn't Trump press secretary. She was just like, I mean, obviously she was the one who coined the phrase, uh, like, what was it? Alternative facts. Uh, yes, where, and so she, yeah, was, she was uh, Fox like News, wasn't she? I don't know if she was on, I think she was just like, I think she was like the Fox News kind of um, go-between between Trump and Fox News. Yeah. So like she'd she'd be interviewed on their behalf. I think yeah, something like that. It wasn't press secretary, but it was you know some kind of advocate. She was yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bit mad, uh, yeah. to to be honest. But you know, our sixteen year old daughter, are we surprised? It's America. Um, yeah. Do you, I, 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 don't, I don't know about you, but whenever you read like an outrageous headline, and it could be absolutely anything, like you know, teacher shoots child uh, for 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 not doing what they're talking about. And then you find out it's America. It's America. Like, okay, it doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> a 10-year-old ten, girl is, is, is runs down the street butt naked only in America. Um, yeah. You know, it's... On it's, crack. <laughs> you wouldn't find that in Burnley, would you? No, you wouldn't. You're, you're really, you're really uh, advocating. You've really got Burnley's corner this, uh, this episode. They're in the FA Cup and they haven't got 10-year-olds running naked down their street. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I pretty much uh, agree. Can, can it we is, just take a moment to acknowledge that moment? That... Yes. It is, it is weird. That, uh, let's let's well, just say, come on, Luton Town, and just move on. <laughs> yes. Come on, Luton Town. Uh, I saw um come on Luton Town coming from that who was, who was Luton... thank you thank you Michael yeah who was Luton Town playing in the... oh Chelsea in the Chelsea. FA Cup we lost, we yeah, lost yeah. 3-1 it was a valiant effort <laughs> yeah uh, but, I, I but would... Tam, Tammy Abraham hat trick uh, really put us look god look at me sounding like a sportscaster like a like a, I know a lot about sports I used to present a football show a long time ago but that was a long time ago yeah exactly yeah uh but anyway yeah basically they say it's a pretty pretty crazy story but personally i love it but it's not the biggest story the biggest story is about really it was in in many ways about a cancelling you know because what is cancelling it's when a mass mob of people uh take take down a a huge uh, powerful figure and that figure was wall street and the massive mob of people was the reddit community known as wall street bets did you hear uh, about this story so no Okay, you didn't hear about it. Oh, it was it was trending on Twitter. Oh, I was trusting you to uh, to to. No, basically, I'll explain. I'll explain the situation with the only way I know how, uh, an analogy. So basically, I'll explain the the concept of the Wall Street bets. So imagine I asked to borrow a, a pen. Okay, you imagine right. this. Uh, at this point, I now owe you a pen. And let's imagine. Oh, are you going to go full on Jordan Belfort on me? As a, no, no, no. no, yeah, no, no. Actually, yeah, maybe that's why a pen came into my head. That was like the first thing that came to my head. But basically, um, so uh, imagine that the price of a pen is is ten pounds. So what I do is I sell the pen for ten pounds. Right. Uh, now I still owe you a pen, and I have ten pounds. And now let's imagine that the price of a pen suddenly goes down to like five pounds. Mm-hmm. Well, now I sell the pen for five pounds. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I buy a pen for five pounds. I mean, so I buy a pen for five pounds, give you the pen I owe you, and I've made five pound profit. Yeah. Because I, now, basically, imagine that whole thing, but switched for stock. And in this case, there was a, a hedge fund. I don't know what they were called. It doesn't matter. Basically, they borrowed, in this scenario, a lot of GameStop stock. And then they sold it for, so GameStop, obviously, the, you know, gaming shop company, in America, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they sold it for you know x amount assuming that the price would then go down so they could then buy it back and give it back to the people they owe it to but basically <laughs> wall street bets realized what they were doing uh, this hedge fund and what they decided to do was immediately all start buying GameStop's stock stock was james stop stock that was a hard sentence right there immediately causing the value to skyrocket <laughs> and it basically has reached a point now where the hedge fund stands to lose more than the entire worth of their company on this <laughs> on this whole scheme and uh i find it interesting because it does basically 
Wall Street are now really scared because they're realizing that literally a bunch of pranksters could just, and that's kind of the problem with like the whole stock thing. Like I think everybody knows deep down that all of this money stuff, like uh, David Mitchell had a famous kind of quote after the the uh, 2008 recession, was it, two, I guess it was 2007 recession. Uh, he said, like he said, uh, you know, it, it, it's just numbers. Uh, the, the money hasn't actually gone anywhere. It's just a bunch of numbers on computers. So you, you'd have to think if you're the first person to notice those those numbers going in the wrong direction, there's going to be a part of you just thinks, I'll just change it, you know, because it's just and that's kind of the point, like ultimately it's just kind of made up numbers like these ideas like people talk about, oh, this company lost a million pounds or like mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this person's worth two billion pounds. Mm -hmm. It's all completely made up. Like these numbers, it's not like they have two million, two billion pounds worth of stuff. Somebody's just said it's worth two billion pounds, and when you realize how much of it is just completely in your mind, you realize how just vulnerable this is in the age of like internet pranks and things like that for people to just screw around with stuff like that. And I genuinely, I mean, I guess if I have a prediction, is that the next recession or something is just going to be caused by like a prank. Like 4chan or something is going to be like, okay, let's all, you know, suddenly sell our stock or something because it will be funny. Uh, yeah. Are you excited for our, our future where the stock market is just vulnerable to these, these pranksters? I mean, it'd make like business uh, reports a lot more exciting, wouldn't it? Um, mm. And we're just going to take a look at the London Stock Exchange and, uh, <laughs> oh, we, would you look at that? Yeah, let's talk to uh, our 4chan uh, that is <laughs> 4chan has uh, risen by like 5,000%. It's now, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's now uh, this daily highest. Uh, the winning in the stocks today is the Nazi party. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> and it's it's worth a lot. Um, but I, I, what I don't understand, it's so, call, call me old fashioned, but it's so aristocratic being mm. in the stock market i mean I, yeah. i've said to you before that i was give, gifted uh shares in paddy power bet for uh, for christmas yeah uh shares that i do not know what i'm gonna do with because i want to get rid of them um but it's it means nothing yeah like, yeah well, i'm not gonna be able to change anything in the company it's not like you know having a share in a company gives you any influence at all yeah it's just a number and apparently those numbers have value so yeah I, I don't get it i really don't get it yeah but, like I, I commend those who are involved in it and i know a few people who are but fuck it i'm i'm a simpleton yeah no yeah. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a simpleton who buys microtransactions on fucking Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> your version of like wall street trading <laughs> no yeah it, it's strange obviously because like the thing about owning a stock is even if like a lot of people who like a lot of these Wall Street people who own like billions of dollars, like they don't actually have that much money. They've just got loads of stock that happens to be valuable. And it's kind of like uh, ultimately it, it's a weird precarious situation to be in because you actually have very few liquidable assets. It's just like, oh, you know, you've got some some stock which you can sell, but you're not going to sell it because what if the price changes? So ultimately, yeah, it's just nonsense. Anyway, that is all the news for for this week. Like I say, it's been a comparatively boring week simply because Donald Trump isn't in charge anymore. We don't get exciting right. news anymore. And uh, he isn't in prison yet. I know, yeah. Oh, that would be good. I hope that happens, because if it does, like, I don't really trust the Democrats to, you know, bring down the hammer. But if they did, you know, we could do a whole special. Brilliant. Anyway. Michael, if uh, if people want to get in touch and uh, give yes. us their cancel issues, where can they get in touch? And after nine episodes, we really want you to get in touch. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. We've got... We've got a decent, I think we're up to 49 subscribers, which, you know, arguably sounds like not that much. But you think about it, 49 subscribers, that's potentially 49 emails we could be getting. Exactly. So if you wanted to get in touch with us, it would actually be uh, cancelcouncilyt at gmail.com. That's C-A-N-C-E-L-C-O-U-N-C-I-L-Y-T at gmail.com. Uh, and where else can they can they follow us? Perfect. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. That is Council Council YT. That is C A N C E L C O U N C I L Y T. Mm. Uh, go, go follow us first. Go check us out, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, to follow the first hundred people who follow us. 
That's a good plan. I I don't see. That's why you're the Did social you see all the YouTube guy. guys are doing like, hey, ten percent of you who are watching aren't subscribed, and they just yeah, that's that's a new thing. But yeah, please subscribe. Cheers, thanks. Oh, yeah. um, watching. That's a good one. Yeah, we will do that. I think actually, I'm not sure whether or not we've. Uh, I don't know if we average more views than we have subscribers. I think. Okay, what was our big successful one? You ready? Our most successful video was ah I, i'm actually not surprised by that our most successful one was the elliot page one but i think that makes sense because it's hilarious anyway time for our second topics of the podcast i, I am gonna go with nature programs because what's the fucking point um well mm. I, I, maybe it's because i'm sort of young enough to, that my attention span is really really small uh which is you know they talk about ep- epidemics in the world that that could be uh, our, our, our next pandemic to, to face but i don't see the point in any nature program so if somebody shows me a penguin standing in the arctic i don't know what you want me to think mm, that is true <laughs> like, but... wait, i i know who greta thunberg is she's just going to scream at me whether i watch it or not and uh you know i much rather and this this sounds really morbid but i'd much rather watch a guy on scott on, on fox news um Go go trophy hunting and, and kill this uh, this big massive deer in the middle of nowhere, thinking he's the big I am. Then then watch a penguin in the middle of the Antarctic and we're pretending to care for it. I mean, like I'm not interested. Oh uh, yeah, okay, but here's the, here's the thing though. One one big counter. David Attenborough. You know, right. like that's the thing because obviously, like I agree, like some nature programs can be whatever, but we love uh, you know his. And here it is, the rustic northern root fowl. I completely made. I think that was a pretty good made-up name right there. Uh, foraging for berries in the Arctic's outside Yakutsk in Russia. This small creature can travel for six times its own body length each day, which isn't actually that fast. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that just make you like feel relaxed and calm? No. I can't believe this, you know, because I thought everyone loved. Is David Attenborough still alive? Uh, yes, he is. Good. Well done, him. Good job. Because Richard Attenborough died anyway. No, yes, yeah, I mean, and I, I'd argue that was a lot more sad because I'm a fan of uh, Jurassic, Park. Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and oh, it wasn't he in uh, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street? No, we're gonna have to find out. I'm pretty much... sure he was. Directed Bridge Over River Kwai. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Miracle on... Yeah, you are right. Thank you. Now let's see if I'm right about my theory that he directed a Bridge Over River Kwai. Probably not. I'm probably an idiot, aren't I? <laughs> oh, well, he's been... He's done, like, a lot. Whoa. Exactly. Yeah, so I guess that makes sense. Oh, sorry, he's done a Bridge Too Far. Oh, see, this is why I'm... This Michael, is why I'm uh, Michael the... and your, your film knowledge. I mean... I know, yeah. It's, it's as though you, 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 like, watch films on a daily basis for a film channel. I know, um, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, but overall, you know what, Luke? Uh, I think we, we were doing very well, but I think I'm going to have to uh, not agree with cancelling nature bastard. channels. I think because a lot of them, you know, it varies, but I think a lot of them are, are really impressive. Especially, I mean, have you seen... Um, I I think it was when Planet Earth 2 came out. They also released these specials, and it was basically dealing with, like, how they film the things they do. And you've got to, like, think, you know, like, a lot of these nature documentaries, you'll have people who literally, like, get up at 5 a.m. in the coldest place in the world. (laughs) See, that's the thing. You just hate penguins. Like, what I'm realizing here is that you hate penguins. Or stare at a lion, or stare at an elephant. Like, what's the point? Like, I'm not trying to hang myself. are beautiful. No, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, obviously, it does depend on the, the thing. But I feel like it's just a bit reductionist to just point to one specific animal and say it's boring. Because what about the... It's not about the, the one animal. It's about the symphony of life on Earth. Oh, God, you sound as bad as the, the fucking audience. I, I'm trying to be like, John, uh, I don't know, like John Favreau in the, the Lion King remake or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've you seen the Lion King... Re- You've seen the remake of the Lion King? I have seen the remake. I didn't oh, watch God. it. I didn't... I may or may not uh, have been able to avoid uh, financially incentivizing the remake. Uh, I'm not saying how I may or may not have been able to have done that thing, which I may or may not have done. <laughs> but I may or may not have been able to watch it in such a way that I did not, uh, like I say, financially incentivize the uh, things. But I did watch it out of morbid curiosity. 
<laughs> no, I did watch out of morbid curiosity. No, look, I played, I paid for Disney Plus, and I don't know. Yeah, I, actually, I'm gonna. Yeah, no, okay. Anyway, anyway, basically, here's the thing. He said he wanted that to be a nature documentary, and it was shit. But you know what? Aren't isn't shit actual nature documentaries, unless some of them are. But you know, like some of them aren't, and that's the most important thing. You can't cancel something when. There's just enough, like, enough of them are, like, very good. And I'd say, like, the ones that are famous, like Planet Earth and Blue Planet and Penguin Watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I like them. So, yeah, I'm, just, I'm afraid, Luke, that uh, if... Let's pretend this is Room room 101 for a second. It's not going in Room 101. I, I have three questions, and then we can move on. I just yes. To to the Number one, did you find that the remake scary? Number two... Because of um, how terrible the uh, designs were? Yes. No. <laughs> um... Is it better than original? Number three, have you seen Lion King one and a half? It's actually a film. Okay, so here's the thing. One, it's obviously not better than the original. But two, that wasn't that I've was seen the question. I've seen Lion King two. Simba's but Pride. I haven't yeah, Simba's Pride. But I haven't seen Lion King one and a half. Although, yeah, I do I do feel like I should watch it at some point. Mm. Uh, because I will say like the one thing I thought about with Lion King one and a half is that Lion King two. I'm assuming you've maybe seen it if you mentioned it. I have uh, not seen okay, it. Okay, haven't seen it. Okay, well, I don't know if you know this, but basically, so obviously the, the Lion King one is based on Hamlet. Like a guy's uncle kills his dad, yeah. then he comes yeah, back yeah, yeah. and kills his uncle. Uh, Lion King two is actually based on Romeo and Juliet because the idea is oh, really that, yeah Simba's daughter falls in love with Scar's son, <laughs> and and the thing is basically the logic is like the two families hate each other. Right. So in that sense, you know, I mean, it doesn't end with them both killing themselves because obviously, you know, <laughs> it is children. Yeah, it, it's obvious that what they were like, oh, the first one's like Hamlet, and then like, what can we do next one? And I'm like, oh, Romeo and Juliet. You know, like the son of, oh, sorry, the daughter of Simba loves the the son of Scar, and it shows how the two families are feuding, and obviously it ends with them, you know, agreeing to put aside their differences. So what I want to know is, is what what would Lion King one and a half be based on? You know, I don't know. Who, I want it to be based on, like, I don't know, Macbeth. That'd be great. But I don't think it will be. Because apparently it's about mostly Timon and Pumbaa. That's what I've heard. But yeah, I've never seen it. Good questions. Now, we get to the most important thing. The thing we all love to end on. A hot quality cancel from me, Michael Brown. <laughs> Ready for this? Come on. Ready building it up. I'm going to be cancelling. Okay, this one's this one's a bit obscure. Bill Burr fans. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. So, okay. Let me explain my beef. My, my beef. My beef. Okay. Uh, so, and this also, it kind of applies to people like Dave Chappelle too. Uh, but basically, it's, it's anybody who, so obviously you get these comedians who have, I guess, risen to greater prominence uh, recently on on the idea that they are they they're offensive that they're kind of controversial that they aren't politically correct or whatever else and you know bill burr is of course one of the people who's at the forefront of that but here's what bothers me okay bill burr is a is a funny guy and his whole shtick is that he'll say funny things regardless of who he offends like uh but this is the this is the key thing and this is what bothers me Bill Burr is is will sometimes have opinions where he he makes fun of people on the right, and lots of Bill Burr fans. If you go to like the comment section of like when Bill Burr's making fun of Donald Trump or saying that Biden's like a good guy, like there's a video of um Bill Burr basically saying like he doesn't think Biden's like that bad, and you go to the comment section and it's all of these like Bill Burr fans and they're like angry because he's he's going against their you know, Donald Trump or whatever. And they'll be like, oh, uh, Bill Burr sold out, blah, blah, blah. And this is what bothers me about it. It's like they they act as if they respect Bill Burr because Bill Burr is willing to just make jokes and he doesn't care about offending anybody or anything like that. And they act as if that's what they support. But really, it's not that. They support Bill Burr because they think Bill Burr's on their side. But as soon as Bill Burr turns around and makes a joke against them, suddenly they turn into these big hyper-offended cancel council... I'm oh, sorry, well, not cancel council, but cancelling losers. And they'll be like, oh, cancel Bill Burr. He he said that Biden was okay. He said that Trump stinks or whatever. And you think, ultimately, it shows that they're just just hypocrites. Uh, like, ultimately, they'll, they'll make fun of the left 
for getting offended by Bill Burr. But as soon as Bill Burr says something that makes fun of them, they'll turn around and go, oh, Bill Burr's sold out. Bill Burr's, you know, he used to be funny, but now he's he's got cucked. And I just think it shows it shows not only are they annoying, but they don't understand what makes like they don't understand the whole idea of like comedy being funny, because apparently as soon as it's like, oh, it's offensive to them, then like, oh, I don't like it. So, yeah. What do you think about, I guess, also, what do you think about Bill Burr? But also, what do you think about, like, this idea of people who, they act as if they like him because he's, like, politically incorrect, but as soon as he says something that offends them, they turn around and go, Bill Burr is interesting, 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 just as uh, as interesting as Dave Chappelle, Mm. in that the comedy that they produce is very to the point Mm. and very upfront. I mean, like, compare them to, just going to pluck two. Kevin Hart. No, I was going to pick two British comedians. Oh, um, British comedians. Uh, James A. Caster. James A. Caster and... Dick Reeves. Michael McIntyre, okay. right? <laughs> Dave Chappelle, obviously, with his show on Comedy Central. And Bill Burr, you know, he's done bits he's of SNL. And he's everywhere. Yeah. You know, and they, they've been doing like it for years. Show. Yeah, exa- exactly. Whereas over here, comedy is more entertainment than, than political analysis mm. yeah we have and, very little like serious comedy in the uk and you know as somebody who's a bit of a comedy connoisseur oh yeah it's you frustrating but it's frustrating to see that you know you see these you, know, you see take mark back and do like da, 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 da. Yeah. here i am on the wheel I, playing uh, a game of fucking trivial pursuit like jesus yeah. christ Here's my, my impression of Michael McIntyre always like to do. It's like, uh, do you ever uh, go to the shops and they don't have the thing you wanted at the shops? <laughs> Jane, yeah. Jane from, from Sheffield. thinks, <laughs> we, 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 we've been into a house. <laughs> yeah. The, the, like the Michael McIntyre is. <laughs> is just like happily we, pointing we, out. We went into a house the... without her realizing. <laughs> like, just, just, Brilliant. just deserves to be punched in the head. James yeah. A. Caster is very much an observational co- comedian mm. um and, and, and but like you, you don't get that that sharpness with, with bill burr and obviously with his fans i can see what you mean in that you know because he is a social commentator yeah. uh those fans are allowed to have their opinion and to uh to to, to protest and to and to um to merge really mm. so it's, it's a tricky one uh, yeah See, see, my shtick is, or not my shtick, my beef, I guess I'll repeat that word, is that I feel like I'm what a lot of these people who say that they're very pro-free speech and they they just care about what's like funny. Mm. I think that, that certainly I, and I would probably suggest you based on the fact that we do this show, are like what those people want to be. Because on this show, I don't think anybody could argue that we don't just make fun of everything. Like there's no there's no political bent to this show really. Like mm-hmm. we make fun of stupid things people on the left do, stupid things people on the right do. Yeah. And the thing is, like a lot of people who say they do that, like obviously the classic example, you know Dave Rubin, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the classic example is, would be Dave Rubin. People who say like, oh, you know, I, I'm a free speech person who listens to everything everyone says, and then you look at it, and they're only really making fun of and criticizing the left, and they're completely on board with the right. We're literally what those people say they are. Mm. But we actually are like I've never like I genuinely would say that when Bill Burr makes fun of things on the left or Dave Chappelle makes fun of things on the left, mm. I find it funny when Bill Burr makes fun of things on the right or uh, Dave Chappelle makes fun of things on the right. I find it funny. Like I, there's no political uh, bent to my comedy. And there isn't on this show. Like we've literally <laughs> last last week we spoke about circus Nazis, you know, yes. like we, there's no, there's no need to uh, not offend. Like we laughed about uh, Austrians giving uh, strudel or whatever to Holocaust survivors. <laughs> Nothing's off limits, and yet you know we should have saved that for this week, considering it's Holocaust Memorial Day. That oh would yeah, have been anyway, extra <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Anyway, yeah, but that's kind of my attitude to it. I feel like it's the, it's not just that they're so terrible, but it's that uh, there's a sense of like. I feel like we we could show them how it's done. Be like, you know, any of these Bill Burr fans out there who get offended whenever he mm. makes fun of Donald Trump, they should come on this show and we say, we'll teach you how to have a good yeah. time. Just laugh sure. at everyone. It makes you happier. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I can't cancel them, I'm afraid. I think what they are a unique species and we need to uh, honour thy species because... It's a museum. 
a lot of things belong in the museum but that's for a future episode uh of the of the episode of, of the council council uh of, of, as always uh we would love to hear from you and get in touch because we'd love to uh, hear your views and opinions uh, you can email us council council yt at gmail.com that is c-a-n-c-e-l-c-o-u-n-c-i-l-y-t at gmail.com and on instagram twitter and facebook it is council council yt uh michael one more time for us C A N C E L C O U N C I L Y T. I thought like I I was kind of like that was a bit of a non-committal uh you know like what people do with the um the US anthem the American <laughs> national anthem like I was kind yeah. of thinking like I could have gone for it more like C A A N C like you know just really drawing out every single thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, uh, let's just park that into into next week. Until next week, I have been Luke Anderson Walsh. That has been Michael Brown. We'll see you for episode ten of the Council Council. Back at you. <laughs>